Well, welcome to Wednesday morning. I'm going to try another training session on the bike. I've had a couple more days off after the live stream over the weekend, the high cadence work. Leg is feeling a fair bit better. The lateral movement is still, um, you know, not 100%, let's put it that way. Um, and so I'm going to proceed today's bike session with a little bit of lower body work, single leg lower body work with very low weights, just to see where the mobility is and try and get the muscles firing and feel kind of which stabilizing muscles and ligaments, that kind of thing are still hurting. But before all of that, of course, back to the usual. Cold coffee and amino acids, there's the coffee. Well, Bike Racing Without Mercy is proud to present the people's choice for Chris Pritchard. And Chris crikey, is going to oversee proceedings today. There we go, Chris. Looking magnificent there. I say proceedings. This is not going to be um, a morning of athletic excellence. Let's put it that way. Going to start to see where the mobility is and try and get into the squat position. I say try because I really don't think the mobility is there, but let's see how it goes. So, feet, shoulder width apart, toes pointing slightly outwards, chest up, shoulders back, and just try and squat down. Now, I'm not gonna try and force the movement down, because obviously I want my chest up and my back straight. I'm trying to keep the knees out over the toes, and that's proving difficult right now. But don't force the movement. Nowhere near the depth that I'd normally get to in this kind of movement. <clears throat> so, without putting undue stress on any of the muscles or the ligaments or anything like that, I can see here, and I kind of knew it anyway before I even started, that this is going to be kind of a limiting factor in an area to work on. So, the single leg work, hopefully, will just start building the range of motion a little bit and getting the flexibility back. I'm going to start with the single leg Romanian deadlifts. And now for set two, 10 reps on each side of the single leg Romanian deadlift. And I've been using one of Jane's dumbbells here rather than the Tesco's kettlebell. And I've previously demonstrated these on the Com Hunter workout. So do check out that if you want a full description of the form and technique. But the objective here is to keep the chest up and the back straight and have a nice deep range of motion and really extend through with the glutes and the hips to finalize the movement. Whether or not I'm gonna be able to do that here in a second set, I don't know, because on the first set, it was a little bit wobbly. So chest up, shoulders back, plenty of air into the core. Really try and plant the foot that's gonna be doing the work on the floor. And the foot that's gonna be off the floor, you wanna be extending backwards the legs so that it's nice and straight. Wobbly, but a bit better than last time. Fairly happy with those. Going to do one more set of 10 on each side. Then going to move on to the kettlebell swings. And definitely, it's a leg here in this area, in particular around here, where I'm definitely feeling kind of the most muscular pain and maybe a little bit of ligament pain, but nothing terrible. And now it's time for Chris Garinet's kettlebell swings. And you can see here that I've got myself a new kettlebell, courtesy of Huel, their black edition. And this is a 100% vegan protein, more of this later in the post-workout, but it can... So the objective of the kettlebell swings is to really fire up the glutes and the hamstrings and to keep a nice straight back through the movement and extend through the hips in order to initiate those muscles. So here we go. They felt pretty good. A bit of a twinge here again. But again, it's just musculature, and hopefully over time, 
that's going to dissipate and I'm going to of course be trying to add a little bit more weight but there's one other piece of business that needs to be addressed today and Mr Cycle Nutter Giacomo asked which Star Wars character would he be? Well it's not straightforward here. Right so this would be way too boring and you are of course a nutter so I was looking for something that's truly nuts. Now this robot I think we can all agree looks absolutely nuts but I think there's something even nuttier in here. Um, I know there's something even nutty in here because I've done my homework and I don't just throw all this together. Ah, but there is another bounty hunter. This bounty hunter looks proper nuts. So Giacomo, you decide which of these two characters do you want to be, but also you've got to do a little bit of homework here and tell me what are their names and which film do they appear in. Well, Bike Racing Without Mercy is proud to present today's training courtesy of Road Grand Tour Cycling, RGT Cycling, live, well almost live, from Mont Ventoux. And Kev Day, thank you very much for putting me onto this. Really looking forward to experimenting with this new cycling app. Also Ed, I've seen you using it as well, so thanks to you as always. So I've just did the warm up, and the training today comprises Ed's crisscross training. Basically it's four blocks of 10 minutes. And those 10 minutes are at 85 to 95 percent of FTP, i.e. 265 to 285 watts for me, roughly. However, every two minutes you add in a 30 second burst at 100 to 110 percent of FTP, i.e. 300 to 330 watts. Now there's going to be four blocks of 10, I think with a two or three minute recovery between each, but because time is pressing on for me, I need to get on some work conference calls. I'm probably going to combine Amoeba into one giant block of 40 minutes or two blocks of 10. Anyway, just finishing the warm up and I'll report back at the foot of Mont Ventoux. Five minutes, 38 seconds. Just on the climb now. Going to start for two minutes at 85 to 95% of FTP. Experimenting with standing feels okay at the moment. Uh, this kind of zone four power. We'll see how it goes. Loving the graphics. So far, feels very realistic in terms of the power versus the speed, but also the gradient changing versus the resistance changing in the bike. Coming up for the first 30 second punch, in 15 seconds, I'll go on 8 minutes. Here we go, sorry, nearly missed it. I'll go to 8.35 on the punch. One down, 15 to go. 25.04, just coming to the last 30 second sprint for the first block of 20 minutes. I'm going to have two minutes, zone two for recovery.
tough this. I'm struggling to hit the two minute power band. I'm really in the 240 to 270 range. But the 30 seconds burst, I've been on point. One hour 11 and five seconds. Just coming to the summit on one one two. I've been in zone three since about two minutes of recovery after the second block of 20 minutes. I thoroughly enjoyed the training experience there on Road Grand Tour Cycling and Kev Day, thanks ever so much for putting me onto it. It gets a massive thumbs up and thanks to you Ed as well. Obviously I've seen you live streaming with it also. Um, I watched a very brief YouTube video um, by Fat Triathlete ahead of trying this out and he described um, Zwift, which he also loves, as kind of more like a video game and Road Grand Tour Cycling is almost like the flight simulator equivalent of it. And I've got to say, I very much agree with that. It's a superb analogy because the riding experience feels very realistic versus the real world in terms of the power versus the speed and in terms of the gradient and the impact of the resistance through the smart bike. Um, felt really good, thoroughly enjoyed the training. It was a real challenge to get to the top of Mont Ventoux. Um, but definitely recommend it, especially because currently you can download the app um, for free. You need an app on either your computer or your iPad or your smart TV to display your avatar and your scenery, and then you need another app to control it all um, on your phone. Um, but it's a free download and there's plenty of preloaded amazing rides, um, including obviously Mont Ventoux, but there's um, different climbs across the USA and Europe. Um, there's also racing and all that kind of stuff. So definitely a hell of a lot more to explore here and looking forward to that. Um, turning to the training, um, yeah, I think that was overall, um, you know, a step forward in terms of the recovery. Definitely the power's not there. When I look at the average power across those two different blocks, um, you know, the first block of 20 minutes, I was averaging about 273, 274 um, average power and the second block about 262. Um, and I was really struggling to kind of hit and sustain the target power range of kind of 260 to 285 watts on the two minutes. I was hitting it on a 30 second sprints as it were, or a 30 second surges. But um, yeah, definitely I was more in the kind of 240 to 265 range on the two minute bits. And so clearly there's a bit of fitness improvement that needs to come on my endurance work. But very pleasingly, you know, well, the leg is still hurting on this side. When I'm cycling, it's okay. And when I'm up and out the saddle, I was experimenting with getting up and out the saddle, that felt pretty good too. Um, so overall, pretty happy with that. Um, and after I finished um, the crisscross training or the sweet spot with Serge's training, I then transitioned to zone three in order to complete the climb up Mont Ventoux. And um, Strava seems to say that my, my time in total for the climb element of uh, Mont Ventoux was uh, an hour. So quite happy with that. Um, and definitely now onwards for a very quick conference call with work and then a bit of post-ride uh, post nutrition. But big thumbs up, give it a try. Well, due to back-to-back -back conference calls, the last five hours have literally just flown by. It's now 2 p.m. in the afternoon and I'm only just getting around to the post-ride nutrition. And as promised, on the deck is the vegan protein from Huel. It's their black edition and can be ordered online from huel.com or huel.co.uk. So before I have the taste test, I figured it'd be useful to show the macro and micronutrient profile. So how many scoops? One or two. If you go for the one, that's just 200 calories, and that's fine. 200 calories is gonna give 20 grams of protein. The protein source is pea protein, ground flaxseed, and brown rice. So that's all good natural sources of protein with natural sweeteners and other natural ingredients. 
So turning therefore to the more detailed macronutrient profile, if you to have two scoops that would be 400 calories, I'm only going with the one, therefore it's 200 calories, so that's 9 grams of fat rather than 18, um, just under 9 grams of carbohydrates rather than 17, um, just um, over 3 grams of fibre which is a good thing for health, and as I say 20 grams of protein. So now time for the taste itself, and I'm, I'm going to not mix in the berries in order that I get the full authentic Huel flavour going on here. Um, get a nice generous scoop going. Actually, no, before we get the scoop going, we've got to get the hippie milk in. Finish that off. Generous serving. And now for the scoop. Now, each scoop here 20 grams of protein from pea, rice, and flaxseed sources. I'll mix it up and let you know what it tastes like. So now for the moment of truth. Cheers. Apologies. Yeah, it tastes good. That's a nice vanilla protein shake. I'll see how it goes over the next kind of month or so and report back as to whether or not this is going to stay in the kind of the post-workout regime.